Hello, today on the Beam channel, I'd like to talk about an important principle in reliable systems in Erlang and Elixir, which is supervisors. Before I do that, I'd like to say, if you, need, if you and your team need help with principles of how to design applications in OTP, please give me a shout. You can find a Calendly link below. And I do training courses for teams around the world on how to implement Erlang and Elixir at various levels. One of the principles of reliable systems in Erlang is that faults should be detected and dealt with in an isolated manner. So in your application programs that are running things, you want to have lots of assertions that are checking that data is correct. And you generally do what's called a happy path programming. So for example, if you're opening a file, you might say, you know, okay, data is file read con equals file read contents. If the file is not there or some other reason can't be opened, um, maybe if you're writing to the file, you've filled up the disk or something, I don't know, then the process will crash. At that point, you need something external to the process to restart it. And that's, but the standard early and way to do it is to use a supervisor. Supervi the supervisor behavior is part of OTP. It comes with Erlang and Elixir. It's been there for years. And it is, again, very well tested and fairly straightforward. So how do you implement a supervisor? Well, it's pretty easy. It's basically two functions. You have a start link function, which just should start up the supervisor. Uh, you may or may not give it a name. It's usually a good idea. And then you have an init one function which takes some parameters which are passed by start link. Uh, if you don't have any that need passing, just pass the empty list or an empty tuple, that's fine. And then it should return okay and a specification for what to start. Now this includes sort of two parts. The first part is the strategy supervisor. So supervisor strategies include, first of all, a stop mechanism for if something keeps respawning too many times. And you can say that if it responds, you know, more than 100 times in a minute or something, you should just kill it and the supervisor itself then dies and you can then deal with that at a higher level. And the second one is a strategy for actually doing the restarts. Now, normally the default you'd use is one for one, which says if a process dies, restart it. That's it. Dies, restart it. But you also have some others. There's um, all for one. So if one process that's being supervised died, restart, kill and restart all of the processes underneath it. That is useful in some cases when there is some state that might be shared. And then finally, you have the third method of restarting is rest for one. And in this case, what happens is when a process dies, everything after it restart. So if you have four processes and number two dies, it'll restart two, three, and four, but not one. And if four dies, it'll only restart four. So you can use this to say, okay, well, we know we're going to maintain a relationship between these modules in some way, often in a way that's going to protect things in the number one module, which, or the number one process, which has some state and number two sort of serves as a protection around it. You can also supervise addition workers, other supervisors. So if you have part of your supervision tree requires different restart strategies and other parts, you can create a tree of supervisors and it looks like that in the observer. So, and each of those can have different structures and different parameters. And then finally, you're going to give it a series of child specs. They look like this today. Uh, in the olden days, they were tuples. Uh, you may still see that occasion. It still works, but the map syntax is considered more, is the modern syntax, and you should probably use that where you can, unless you have a specific need to run on very old versions of the beam, in which case, use the old syntax. And it says, basically, here are the parameters for starting each process. And this is called a child spec. And you, first of all, you give it an ID, which can be pretty much anything. Then you give it a start from tuple, which is module function arguments. So just, just very simple, you apply. The restart parameter 
tells you when you should restart it. A permanent process is always restarted. A temporary process will be restarted if it ends with a no exits with a non-normal parameter. So this is something you might want to run something that'll run for a few minutes or a few seconds or whatever, and then end and then go away. And a transient process will never be restarted. So it's something that, you know, just something quick and if it dies, it dies. No big deal, you don't care. There's a shutdown parameter, some you can default by the way. Shutdown says how should you, when you exit the supervisor, it cleanly shuts everything underneath it down, and what it should do, should it, how long should it wait, and so on. There's a type parameter which says basically this is a worker or, or a supervisor, pretty self-explanatory, and there's some other parameters. You can look at the docs, it'll explain them all, but basically you can default them, and if you don't get them exactly right, it's not a big deal, as long as you get the ID and the restart and the start function correct, everything else will work. So you can also add f and re remove processes from supervisors dynamically, and I'll cover that in a future video. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and if it has, please like and share it, and if I can help you getting up to speed with OTP, I would love to do so. Please give me a shout via the Calendly link down in the notes.